So you may have been in business for a while, or maybe you're thinking about starting your business and you're asking yourself, do I absolutely need an LLC or what is an LLC going to do for me? Do I need to spend the money right now to get my LLC? In this video, I'm going to break down why you may want an LLC and five mistakes to avoid if you decide getting an LLC is right for your business. Let's get started. You're not just a hair professional, you're a CEO. Hey guys, it's Jen here with The Hair CEO, helping you build a premium brand focused on profits without overpaying in taxes. On this channel, I bring you videos on business and taxes tailored specifically to self-employed hair professionals and beauty business owners. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So you may already be in business or maybe you're about to start a business and you wanna know, do I absolutely need an LLC? And the short answer is no, you don't. Now that may surprise you because everybody says, gotta get an LLC, gotta get an LLC. But in the United States, if you exchange money for product or services, you are in business and without you filing any paperwork with the state or with the IRS, you are considered a sole proprietor and you don't have to have an LLC. So you may be asking yourself, okay, well, if it's not necessary, then why do people get it? Well, they get it for different reasons. The first reason is they get it for protection. When you have an LLC, that separates your personal assets from any business liabilities or obligations that you may be responsible for. So think about if your company were to get sued or let's say a credit card is in your business name and the financial obligation is to the business, to the LLC, then your personal money, your personal savings, your car, your home, all of those things are protected in the event that it is determined that your business is liable for some type of legal claim. So now your personal money, your personal assets are protected. And the only thing that that person or that legal claim could go after are things in your business name. So that's the number one reason why people get an LLC is to protect themselves. Now for the beauty industry, I think this is important to have that protection because you're in an industry where you are providing either services or products for people's hair, their skin, their face. And we live in a very litigious country. So I would want you to protect yourself in the event that someone takes you to court or, you know, tries to come after you for some claim that they have against you. I would want you to have that barrier in between so that they could not get anything that you own personally. So that's the number one reason why people get an LLC. The second reason people get an LLC is because they're really easy to form and upkeep. You register for an LLC through the state and annually, most states have it where you have to file an annual report. If you do that and pay whatever fee that they require, then you can keep it in good standing. So pretty simple to form and really easy to maintain. That's the second reason why people get an LLC. The third reason why people get an LLC is for business credibility and fundability. So if you have a business and you haven't taken the step to separate your personal assets from your business assets, then you may come off as someone who is less serious about their business. Maybe you don't plan on being in business very long. So that credibility is lost a little bit with lenders and also even with potential clients, because if you're not set up legally, then maybe you're not in this for the long haul. So I don't know if I want to invest, you know, getting my hair done or my, my services or your or products through you because you may not even be in business next year or next week. So I'm not going to risk getting my hair done or my haircut with you because I don't know how long you're going to be in business. You're not really taking this serious. That could be someone's thought process. The fourth reason why people get an LLC is because it has passed through taxation. What that means is that money from your business flows through the business to you as the owner, meaning you only have to file one tax return at the end of the year, which is that, you know, individual income tax return that's due 
by April 15th every year, mm -hmm. that's all you have to file. So that's the fourth reason why people get it is because it's passed through taxation. The fifth reason that I see people getting an LLC is because of the taxation flexibility. And what that means is that when you have an LLC, the IRS will allow you to be taxed differently. So by default, an LLC is taxed the exact same way as a sole proprietor, which is why getting an LLC will not save you any money in taxes because by default, the LLC is taxed the exact same way as sole proprietors. So people who do not have an LLC, but what the LLC does is it gives you flexibility to be taxed differently. So you can request to be taxed as a C corporation, or you could ask to be taxed as an S corporation. Those are the two most popular elections that people request when they have an LLC. And making that election to a C corp or an S corp has the ability to save you money in taxes. Now, for the majority of the clients that I work with who are hair professionals, we see significant savings in taxes when we make that S corp election. Not so much the C-Corp, but the S-Corp election is really where we see a lot of tax savings. So knowing what you know now, you may be thinking to yourself, okay, you know what? I want to get an LLC. If that is you, I want you to make sure you avoid these five mistakes that I see. The first mistake that I want you to avoid is do not make the S-Corporation election from the very beginning. Do not do this. So I see so many people, you know, they'll go on these websites that help you form your LLC. And a question that they have on that is, do you want to make the S Corp election? And a lot of people on IG are talking about how you save so much money with the S Corp election. And you'll type yes, you'll select yes, go ahead and make me the S Corp out the gate, straight out the gate with the LLC. Now your taxes is an S Corp. This is a mistake because you do not know if it's going to make sense for you to make that election immediately. And a lot of times what happens is that it costs you more money than the money that you're saving in taxes. I can only go by the hair professionals that work with us at the hair CEO group, but a lot of people are getting the S corporation without having a bookkeeper or a tax professional that they're working with monthly. And they're coming to an accounting firm like my own. And what, what happens is, is they'll say, oh yeah, I'm taxed as an S corp, but yet they've done nothing that they're supposed to do when they are an S corp. When you make that S corp election, you have to run your business differently. Now that's a separate video, but that is one mistake that I would avoid when you register for your LLC. The second mistake I want you to avoid is do not use your home address when you register for your LLC. I would prefer that you use a virtual business address. Now, the reason why I want you to do this is because LLC information is public and unless you're okay with having your home address on public documents, then I would want you to have a virtual business address to put on that LLC. This is the registered agent address that I'm talking about. Now, there are companies out here who will register your LLC and ask you, do you want them to be your registered agent? You can absolutely have them be your registered agent and then their address will be on the paperwork. But the reason why I suggest a virtual business address is because at that point, then you can use that virtual business address for other things. Now, the registered agent address that they're going to charge you for annually, this could be upward of a couple hundred dollars a year. You could use the, you know, a hundred dollars for annually. I know some virtual business address costs a hundred dollars. So we'll just use that for a hundred dollars. You could use a virtual business address for your LLC, and then you could still get packages mailed to that virtual business address. And then you could either pick it up on a regular basis or you can have them mail it to you or some of these virtual business addresses actually have it so that you can have physical office meeting spaces there. So there are other ways in which you could use that virtual business address for business purposes other than if you get a, an official notice 
and someone is there to accept that notice on your behalf, which is what the registered agent is for. The fourth mistake I want you to avoid is I do not want you to get your LLC in your salon or barbershop's name. Now, this is a personal preference, but what I'm suggesting this for is because I see a lot of people who open up barbershops and salons and then they'll go through a rebranding process. So as an example, if I'm opening up Jennifer's Beauty Salon and I'm getting an LLC and I'm just like, okay, it's Jennifer's Beauty Salon LLC, I would not recommend that. I would get something more generic. And the reason being is number one, if you want to rebrand, then you don't have to worry about a whole new LLC. And number two, when it comes to getting loans, a lot of times people make assumptions based off of your LLC's name. And so if I'm Jennifer's beauty, beauty salon, LLC, you know, I hate to say it, but a lot of people are going to already determine that they're not giving me any money based on the name alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a more, a more generic LLC name. Maybe it'll be Jennifer Enterprises LLC, but I don't want it to be just your brand's name with salon or barbershop in it for those reasons that I stated. You can always get a DBA doing business as, some states call them trade names, some states call them assumed names, but these are names in which you can operate under. So you could have Picture Perfect Solutions LLC doing business as Jennifer's Beauty Salon. So that way, if I need to rebrand, all I have to do is get a DBA, which is less expensive. And then I could, you know, continue business under my rebranded name. Or if I'm getting funding, I don't have to necessarily lead with my doing business as I could say, Picture Perfect Solutions LLC is applying for this loan. And then they're just looking at my financial statements based off of that legal name, not my DBA name. So I hope that makes sense. So that's the fourth mistake that I would want you to avoid. The fifth and final mistake that I would want you to avoid is do not mix your personal money with your business money. Now, I don't even want you to do this when you are a sole proprietor, but I definitely don't want you to do this when you set up your LLC because I want you to get a business bank account and keep all of your money completely separate. This is so important because now that you have that protection, you want to make sure that legally you are operating completely separate. Think about it this way. If you were to go to court, and let's say someone is suing you for something and they're trying to go after your personal assets, but you're saying, oh, well, I have an LLC. Well, if they can prove that you've been mixing your personal money with your business money, then you're really not going to have a leg to stand on because they're saying, well, you're not actually operating a separate entity. You're not operating something separate from your personal life because you're already intermingling your money. So it's, it's an argument against that protection. So please, please, please make sure that your money is always separate. That is the fifth mistake that I would want you to avoid if you decide to go forward with a LLC. So now that you know what mistakes to avoid, if you decide to get one, you may be thinking, okay, Jennifer, so where do I go to register for an LLC? Well, I'm glad you asked. I do have some recommendations. I'm going to leave the links below. There are some free options free doing the work. There are state filing fees, but if you want to DIY it, I will give you a link to the best website that I know of to help walk you through that process. Or if you want to pay someone else to do the work for you, I will leave a link for one or two of my recommendations on getting that done quickly and conveniently. So question of the day, does your business have an LLC? And when did you get it set up? Did you get it set up before you started your business or after you were already in business for a little while? Let us know in the comments. All right, well, thanks for checking out this video. If you found it helpful and you want more videos like this, where I simplify business and taxes. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you next time.